On drop rate is a series where I can only receive an item within its wiki stated rate, but with a twist. If I receive the item before or on its rate, I get to keep everything earned during the episode, including the desired item. However, if I do not end up getting it, I have to forfeit all the loot earned to you guys, the viewers. Let's introduce today's challenge. While Gothic Sleeps has finally arrived to Old School RuneScape 16 years since its original release in RuneScape 2. With the quest comes the absolutely iconic Torment the Demons, which used to drop the Dragon Claws, but in Old School, Chambers of Seric already dropped those. So these versions of Torment the Demons instead has two brand new uniques to offer. First, we have the Bone Claw, which on its own is unusable, but collect two of these and you can combine them to make the equipable Tier 60 Bone Claws. The strength of these weapons lay in their special attack, being placed between Dragon Dagger and Dragon Claws and when used it drinks 30% special attack energy. The special attack hits 3 times and each hit has a chance to apply a burn effect, starting at 10 HP of damage every 40 seconds. But this effect stacks up to 5 times, leaving you at 50 damage over 40 seconds at max stacks. And lastly we have the Tormented Synapse, used to craft the Ember Light, Scourging Bow and Purging Staff, 3 brand new tier 77 weapons that deal increased damage against demons. Out of these two, the item we're going for in this episode is the Tormented Synapse at a drop rate of 1 in 500. Quick disclaimer, I started recording for this episode roughly two days after the update went live and it's now been one week. And the drop rates of the synapse has not changed on the wiki yet at all. The wiki has tracked over 750,000 KC and landed on 1 in 499, but 1 in 500 seems way more likely, hence it's the stated rate for this video. Also on the weekly reset after, they reworked the drop table slightly, increasing the drop rate of the bone claw by 17% as well as renaming it to burning claws. They also removed then added a few items to the regular loot table, but it's nothing major, so let's get into the grind. But of course, first of all, we have to actually complete the quest to get access to the Tormented Demons, and I loved this quest in RuneScape 3, so I'm really excited to get this started. Oh, is that the future riches that Tormented Demons has for me? I sure hope so. That is a very weird glitter animation, I do have to say. I am not too into the lore of RuneScape, I have to say, but this guy, Akrise, is actually a Barrow's Brother boss in RuneScape 3, so maybe we can get this as a future boss, who knows? I'm gonna be honest, I wish the best in slot melee gear looked like this. If it did, I would never, ever swap off melee, holy. And we are finally at the final fight of the quest, which is actually two tormented demons. So these are the creatures we're going to be fighting later on after this quest. They are a lot easier though in this final fight. As you can see, my combat stats are crazily boosted from touching the Stone of Jazz. And that is it. The quest is completed. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. A really fun one to do. And now we only have a couple of things left to do before we can actually start killing the tormented demons. And the first thing is to get a greater demon task, which we actually just got on the last points we had because the tormented demons are greater demons so we actually can use the slayer helmet on this task now which is going to help out a lot and lastly i've made a massive investment in three tormented synapses to make the best in slot weapons for the tormented demons this process is actually irreversible so that money is now gone forever but look at these weapons these are so cool and they are actually insane at the tormented demons as well to start off, this is the gear setup and inventory we're going with for this grind. This is all extremely subject to change because I've never killed these creatures and the guides out there are very far and few between. But this is at least a good starting point. I don't think the spell animation is supposed to look like this. Uh, what has happened? But let's have a brief overview of the Tormented Demon's attacks. First off, the demon has a massive flame barrier that reduces its damage taken for 25 ticks. This however does not apply for Demon Bane or Abyssal weapons, meaning all the three weapons I have go right through it. Besides that, every 8-9 to nine attacks it snares you and shoots out two firebombs on your tile and one tile around you, as well as disabling your run. Simply spam click anywhere where the projectiles are not hitting and you should be good. After this ability is done, the Tormented Demon will also swap attack style. Finally, every 25% HP lost causes the demon to change its protection prayer to what style last hit them. This is why thralls have a massive potential here, because if I'm ranging for example the demon and a magic thrall hits the final hit to that 25% breakpoint, instead of protecting against ranged in this scenario forcing me to swap to another combat style, it will protect against my magic thrall hit. 
But that is pretty much it. But let's go ahead and see what we get for the first kill. Elite combat task. Two elite combat tasks even. And 8,000 GP. Pretty decent first drop, I would have to say. But before we dive into the Tormented Demon grind, this video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game on the market with over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships of 10 major nations. Ranging from biplanes and armored cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. So there is definitely something out there for every vehicle enthusiast. The game is also extremely immersive due to how true to reality their vehicles are designed and the sound effects that go with them. But not only that, each vehicle is also modeled down to its individual components, like engines, fuel tanks, weapons and even the crew, which all individually can take damage, shown with an x-ray view to precisely show you the damage of how it hurt the machine or even the crew in different ways, which in my opinion is the coolest feature. If you're getting ready to hop into the game and try it out, there are three distinct modes available. First we have the arcade mode, which is the fast-paced game mode with enhanced vehicle performance and simplified physics, while simulator mode lets go of all the guardrails for the ultimate challenge. And finally we have the realistic mode, landing somewhere in the middle, so regardless of your experience you'll find something that fits your pace. And on top of all of this, War Thunder has a massive community of over 70 million players to join epic PvP battles with today in a wealth of high quality content perfectly suited for fans of military history. So what are you waiting for? Play War Thunder right now on PC, PlayStation or Xbox by clicking my link in the description or pinned comments and get a massive bonus pack available for new and returning players who have not played for at least 6 months, including multiple premium vehicles and an exclusive vehicle decorator. Thank you so much to War Thunder for sponsoring this video, let's get back to the Tormented Demons. I thought I didn't need any spells for this staff because I thought it was autocast, just like a trident and on on top of that, I'm doubly dumb because I don't even need magic. I thought that eventually these demons would protect against two styles at a time, but that is not the case. I only need two styles, I could go with only ranged and melee, so I'm just going to bank the mage setup. Well, that honestly makes it a lot easier, only having to switch between ranged and melee and having more inventory space for food and prayer pots is honestly going to be so valuable. Normally when you kill a creature on a slayer task, you get its HP and XP, so these should give 600, but instead, I got 1065, they give quite boosted slayer experience and combat experience, so on just this task I'll get like 200,000 slayer experience, which is crazy. Oh, we got the first smoldering gland. I just accidentally clicked it right away, but this is not something you can loot. It's 1 in 25, and when you click it, you gain prayer experience over time. Dude, the damage on these weapons are so insane. I'm really happy I bought all of them. I guess the staff was kind of a blunder, but it is what it is. It's gonna be good for something. So I know these creatures were released just like two days ago at this point, but this area is incredibly crowded. I've been world hopping for probably around 10 minutes at this point, and I've yet to find an empty world. Time-wise, it is not really the peak time even, so this can be even worse in like 3-4 hours from now, which which is going to be quite rough. Oh, we got the first smoldering heart. Again, this is not lootable, so when you actually click on this, you instantly use it. It's actually more rare, this one. It's 1 in 125, and this actually boosts your stats even one step above divines. And we got the final smoldering item, the smoldering pile of flesh. When you click on this, you uh, eat and you heal, so you can actually do this multiple times. I think it overall heals like 100 HP. So it's definitely very, very useful on this grind to just extend the trips. One final gear switch we're making, or addition I should say, we're bringing a light bearer instead of the suffering with a Saradomin God Sword. As finding a spot for the demons is so hard, I want to extend the trips as long as possible and the Saradomin God Sword spec should help with that quite a lot. Well, that pretty much fully healed me from 46 HP and also I think I got like 25 prey points, not bad. Okay, so most things from these creatures are not really even worth picking up. It's like 2000 GP per kill sometimes, but I just finished a 10 KC trip and the things that I did pick up was overall worth, let's have a look, 32,000 GP. Yeah, most of the money here, if not nearly all the money, will come from the uniques, which both of them are extremely valuable right now, so let's hopefully see them. Yes, we got the bone claws. Holy shit. We got these before the tormented synapse. This is more rare. That's insane. Of course, we are risking this now because we haven't seen the tormented synapse. But if we can get two of these, which is, of course, pretty unlikely, 
Look at this, by the way, 22.7 million GP. So that means the full class has to be like 45 million. But if we get another one, we can actually make the class. I would love to personally make them. Where on the collection log, by the way, are these? I can't see them anywhere. Oh, of course, they're on Tormented Demons. There's a new tab. But yeah, look at that. 46 KC. We have one of the class. And of course, we're still looking for that Tormented Synapse. According to the wiki, you should be seeing around 30 kills an hour on these. But I've been getting 39 roughly. Nearly 40 actually. And of course, I am on a Slayer task. So that is speeding it up by quite a bit. But still, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. And that means if we go on rate, it should take no more than 15 hours. Which is actually insane for a drop worth 66 million GP. With this kill, we're hitting the first big milestone of 100 KC. And as you can see on the loot tracker, that is nearly exactly 20 million GP. But of course, the regular loot is not really contributing to that much. So really, it's all in the uniques. Now that I have some more experience at the Tormented Demons and I'm 132 KC deep, I have changed my inventory quite a lot. I can now avoid pretty much all the damage. And I do get some of those smoldering flesh as well that actually gives me more HP. So... I think 5 anglerfish should be good enough and maybe we can do like a 20 KC trip. I don't think I could have balanced my supplies much better than that. Look at my inventory. We have done a 25 KC trip. By far, pretty much double over the best I've done so far. And we have uh, no prey bots, one anglerfish and just one dose of combats left. That's insane. I know what my new inventory setup looks like. Just to show you guys how insane this layer experience is here, I'm about to finish the task and look in chat, 200,000 Slayer experience for one Tormented Demon task. But I'm not going to be picking up another task, I'm just going to do it with a Torva full helm instead because it's not that much of a difference and I don't have any Slayer points. A bit of a late revelation here which is going to help me a lot with my SGS specs and get way more value out of them. When the Tormented Demon roots you in place, it actually removes its shield and looks Look at this. I didn't know this is how it worked, but 80 damage with SGS. I think that's even higher than you're supposed to be able to hit, and it didn't even say a max hit. So I feel like when the shield goes down, it takes additional damage as well. I can't confirm that though, but it seems insane. I've actually kind of been waiting to get my first elite clue scroll because you can actually get them from these creatures, and we're 241 KC in, and we have not seen a single one. And on the wiki, they still say unknown, so we actually don't know how common or rare these are. I have no idea if I should have had one or multiple at this time or none and if the actual drop rates are confirmed i will update you guys on that as well way before the drop rates and oh my god look at that value 79 million holy shit oh that leaves the loot tracker at 100 million after 255 kc but that is the challenge one and uh, that only took like seven and a half hours to get so that is insane money 72.4 million in the price checker but it said 79 million on the ground which i think is more accurate so if it stays on this price which I don't think it will, this will be an insane moneymaker. And before we sell it, of course, we have now the collection log completed as well, so that is kind of nice, in 255 KC. Definitely very luckier, as the bone class was one in 625. But let's go ahead and see what we can sell these for. Tormented Synapse. Of course, we bought three of them earlier, but for a lower price. And now it insta-sold. 77 million GP after the tax. But what we're going to be doing now is we're going to buy another one of these Bone Claw. Which is only 16.9 million, surprisingly. They are more rare, but they are more expensive. And let's just... Oh, okay. I was gonna say leave them there. But now we can actually try out these Bone Claws. Because if I take out the one I already have... We combine them. Let's see if I need a chisel or anything like that. Yeah, oh, okay. That was easy. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, let's equip them. See what they look like. Okay, they look pretty good, actually. I kind of like that look. But let's go ahead and try them out. But let's go ahead and give it a go. Let's special attack the dummy in my house. And let's see the animation. Nice animation. And that was a max hit of 61 damage, I'm pretty sure. Of course, I don't have the infernal cape and I'm not using the altar ring. And we can also see the burn now. So that is taking for one damage. I don't know if it just takes faster when you've stacked it up or if it actually does more damage. But I do want to see these in action on an actual boss. And the Vardorvis has a very low slash defense. Okay, already did great damage there on the first one second one an absolutely atrocious and then third one was almost exactly max 
that's it. But now you can see it is burning for one damage, so it is not stacking up higher than that it seems, but I'm going to stay here, do the new special attacks when I get them, and see if we can stack it up even higher. Okay, so yes, it can stack higher than one damage, and it's not only speeding up the tick speed, because now it's taking two fire damage, which is not a massive amount, but that as additional damage on top of the damage it's already doing is not bad. But on this grind, we ended up making a lot of money, but unfortunately, we never found out the drop rate of the Elite Clue Scroll, and even to this day, over a week after release, it has still not been revealed yet. Also, please remember to check out this video's sponsor, War Thunder, by clicking my link in the description or pinned comment to receive a bonus pack of goodies for new and returning players that hasn't been playing for six or more months. But until next time guys, take care.